So one of the things that I've seen people get tripped up on frequently is how promises work within loops because there's two different types of loops and two different ways that promises work with them. So you have the newer loops that have callbacks within them. So like for each map and reduce, and then you have the more traditional loops like for loops, while loops and do while loops. So between those two newer and more traditional loop approaches, promises work in two different ways. So we're gonna go over how exactly they work within this lesson. So for this, I've set up a simple command within an existing Adonis.js project. So we'll have roles one through five that we'll be creating throughout our examples. And I'm just deleting out those example roles from any previous command runs that we've done through this example. And then I'm logging out that we're starting our for each loops. And then I'm logging out that we're ending our for each loops. And we'll do all of our work right here within this comment block. So we'll start with the newer loops since those are a little bit easier to grasp visually. So let's go ahead and create all of our examples here. And we'll create them one by one instead of using a create mini just so that we can visualize this. So one of the things that I see people try to do is they'll loop over their examples. So they'll do example for each and they'll have an async callback function for each record. And then they'll try to await it within this callback and they'll just go ahead and create their record. So if we add this logger info starting data.name and then this logger info ending data.name we can see a little bit easier what's happening so let's go ahead and try to execute this by jumping into our terminal and then we can run our example here which is no days promise and you can see we're greeted with an error and that's because it's been aborted so so there's a few different reasons why you could get an aborted error one of which is that you had some pending actions or promises in our case running still whenever your command finished so if we scroll up just a little bit here we can see our no days promise execution we started our for each and then we got through each of the ones within the loop so they all started and then our for each finished. So visually what we can see here is that our for each loop is not listening to our await at all. And that behavior is true for any of these callback approach loop methods. So that would be for each map reduce. None of them will listen to the await. The individual line will await. So our ending call did execute after the await finished, but it did not wait before moving on to the next loop item. It just went about its business. So one of the ways that we can resolve the abort error is by grabbing all of our promises and making sure that they all finish before we actually finish out our command. So what I like to do for that is to utilize the map method. And then we can utilize the map method to return back promises to discern whether or not the individual promise had finished. So we can do const promises equals and then return back our promise. Now, since I'd like to visualize that the promise did actually finish running here, we don't want to just return back. So one of the ways around this is that we can create a custom promise so we can return new promise async and get back our resolve method here, paste our contents inside of here. And then once we're done with all of our actions, we can just call that resolve method to resolve this promise that we're returning. Now TypeScript's not happy with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that this is any to make it happy. So now for each of our maps, we're returning back a promise. And then inside of our promise, we're running our execution. And then once we've run whatever it is that we want to run, we're resolving that promise. So within here, we have all of our promises and we can console log that as well. So we can do console.log here, our promises. And then we also want to ensure that they all finish before we finish out our run command. So we'll want to await promise and then you can do all or all settled and then pass in your promises. And so this will return back an array of values that you're actually resolving from within your promise. So if we actually put our individual role records within here, we would get those back as an array in the value of our all settled. So for example, if we do const role equals await, this here would be const roles equals await. And we can console.log out those roles as well. So let's give that a save, jump back into our terminal, and let's try running that one more time. All right, so you can see a couple of different things here. We started our for each, then we ran through each individual loop item, starting each of those promise calls, and then we got back an array of our promises. You can see each of these is in the state of pending at this point in time. And then we await for each of those to end. And then we get back the resulting promise with the value of each of those roles and the status of fulfilled. So we're no longer running into an error issue and we're now creating all of our role records. Now, it just so happens to be due to this being a quick command that they are finishing in the same order that they are starting. This is just by chance. There is no promise of that actually happening with this approach. For example, if we wrap this inside of a set timeout, just like so, and we grab the index of our map and we take 1000 minus I times 100. So since these are quick commands, 
what I would expect to see here is that these will finish in the opposite order of which they've started. So let's go ahead and give this a run. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our additional console logs here to make this a little cleaner. And then let's go ahead and move our start out so that we actually get an accurate depiction of when this started. So let's give that a save there. Jump back into our terminal, give that a run. And you'll see it takes a little bit of time here, but we do get an end result. So we have row one, two, three, four, five starting, and then we have five, four, three, two, one ending. So they ended in the inverse order that they started, just as we expected, since we're setting a timeout, inverting the amount of time that the actual promise needs to await. So what this is visualizing is that utilizing map and for each with this approach means that our array of promises are going to execute and finish in any random order, depending on the amount of time that the individual promise takes to resolve. So if you start a long process as your first promise, that promise could end last. If you need your promises to execute sequentially, so starting and ending one, starting and ending two, starting and ending three, in that type of order, what I would recommend doing for a, the callback approach here is to use reduce instead. Okay, so our accumulator for our reduce is just going to be the previous promise that we are awaiting. So this will just be a singular promise. Let's go ahead and set this to any because TypeScript won't be happy with that. And then down here for our reduce start value, we'll want to just return new promise. And then let's have this resolve and then auto resolve. So all that we're doing is kicking this off with a default promise that's just going to immediately resolve. And then we're passing that in as the previous value. So this promise here will just serve as a placeholder promise for our default value of our accumulator. So what we we'll wanna do is await that promise to finish. And then once that does finish, we'll start with our new promise chain and return that back. So this actual return value every time that we loop will serve as the previous promise, which will then await, which will then return back a new promise. And then finally, once we return back the final promise, all that we'll wanna do is await that here, and then we no longer need to await for them all to settle. Okay, so once we have this, let's go ahead and give this a run. And this will take a second, but you will indeed see that we start roll one and then end roll one and then start roll two and then end roll two, and then the same with three, four, and five before our loop finally finishes out. So now each of our items are running sequentially, and that only takes a second because we have our set timeout waiting for a portion of a second. So if we actually get rid of this set timeout, and for this we would need to get rid of our ending console log here, and our resolve, take this down to just our role, and instead of awaiting this, we can just return back the promise that this role.create returns and get rid of our wrapping promise. And so now what we're doing is we're looping over each of our examples, we're awaiting the previous promise to finish, and then we're starting our new promise and returning back the actual promise value to be our new accumulator. So although we won't have our ending console log, these will execute in the same order that we had seen in the example that we had just run. It will just run much quicker now since we're no longer awaiting a portion of a second. So let's go ahead and give this a run now. And there you go, you can see that was a lot quicker. And although we don't see the end, we know via this example that they are now running in sequential order. So we have row one, two, three, four, and five before our loop finishes out. And you could do the same approach with map as well. So if we switch this back to a map, get rid of that promise. The only difference is they won't run sequentially, but look at how clean we can make this loop. So we'll get rid of that. We'll use the arrow function to auto return. And then we'll do const promises equals await examples dot map. And then we'll create each of those items. And then we can await promise dot all or all settled and then provided in the promises. So although our previous examples were kind of verbose since we had the additional console logs in there, look at how easy this can come down to. So we're down to just two lines now, we can execute this. And although we don't have any console logs to show our work, we know that since we're using map, unlike our resolve example, they're not going to run sequentially. So they'll start and end in any order by how long the actual process takes. But we know that we're returning back the promise that the role.create is returning. And we're awaiting for each of those promises to finish out before we actually move on. Lastly, let's talk about the more traditional loops. So our for loops, while loops, they all behave the exact same. So they're all going to actually await for our awaits to execute. So if we take our previous example and put it inside of a for loop, so for let i equals zero, i is less than examples.length, and then i plus plus, we can follow our same naming structure and do const data equals examples i, and then we can do this logger info, starting data.name, this logger info, ending data.name. And then we can actually come into here and await role create data 
And although for loops may trip people up with this particular line right here, I actually prefer them whenever it comes to running promises sequentially because we don't have to worry about additional callbacks or anything of the sort to await for things to finalize. We know that it's just going to adhere to our await and we can read things from top down knowing that they're going to be run in a sequential order. So if we give this a save, we can see that by running this once more. So let's run no days promise. And you can see exactly what I just described. So we have start and end for roll one, start and end for roll two, start and end for roll three, four, and five. And as I had previously mentioned, this is the same behavior for any of these more traditional loops. So whether you have this for loop, whether you have the more object based for loop, so for let key in obj, um, whether you have a do while loop, so something like a do while, whether you have just a while loop, they're all going to adhere to that await. So they will all behave in a similar fashion. It's just these callback based loops that won't await for our promise to finish. So the main takeaway would be that these callback based loops are fantastic if you don't care about running your promises sequentially. You can simply do this in two lines if your call is pretty basic. It's whenever you start to care about sequential order of execution that you want to start considering going back to the more traditional loops or utilizing that reduced chain approach that we had covered previously where you await for the previous promise to resolve before finally moving on to the next one. So hopefully that helps shed some light on the order of execution with promises within loops, the newer callback based loops and the more traditional for loops. As you can see, there's just those two different approaches to wrap your head around. And once you do, you can actually use them to your advantage pretty easily. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed or learned something new, consider hitting that like button and subscribe button down below and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.